Hello everyone. I haven't posted in a while uh, to anything to YouTube because I haven't really had any comping, camping content to uh, to post. So um, it's a little hard because I'm not quite sure what <laughs> to put up. Um, but I thought I would just jump on here and give you a little bit of update of what's going on for me. Um, so I got, uh, finally, after four years, I finally got the COVID virus about a month ago. And, um, it, uh, thankfully I happened to have some Paxlovid uh, prescription on me because I had gone on a cruise last year to Alaska and I asked my doctor if I could have a prescription, you know, have a prescription for it because I wanted to be ready just in case. And so thankfully I had kept it and even though it had gotten <laughs> expired um, and I was worried uh, that it may not work, it actually did work. Um, about the second day my symptoms started to get a little scary, you know, I was starting to feel like I couldn't breathe. Um, my lungs were really, I have asthma as it is. So I've always been a bit terrified of getting, getting COVID because of my asthma and the fact that my lungs are already so bad off. Um, and that's why, you know, I did my best to try to avoid getting it. But so I managed to not get it for the four years, at least to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure I would have shown some symptoms. Um, so anyways, um, I took that Paxlovid the first night and, um, the next morning I felt so much better. It was like almost immediate, you know, within a day I could uh, feel my symptoms receding. And, um, uh, I was just so happy to, to see that the expired medication was working and happy that I had it on hand. But um, I had to take it for a week, and it was the worst medication I've ever taken just because it was giving me this terrible metallic, really, really strong metallic taste in my mouth, and um, it was super unpleasant to have that 24-7. But, you know, I stuck to it. There was a couple of times where I'm like, I got to get off this medication. It's just horrible. I can't take it anymore. But then I thought, you know, I got to stick to it here and um, I just can't take a chance, you know. So I got through it and my symptoms throughout the week were pretty mild. Um, and then I had a reprieve from like um, symptoms after the medication stopped for about three to four days or so. Um, um, you know, my symptoms had l pretty much left me, uh, just some lingering, a little bit of, you know, congestion. And then about, f I think it was around f three or four days later, started to get symptoms again. So I think it was probably a rebound, which the Paxlovid, um, is prone to do. And so I started to have some symptoms again pretty mild though. I mean, congestion, headache, um, and a little bit of tiredness, but they were, you know, they were mild, not too bad. Um, so that has been about a week ago now. And, um, I'm still having some lingering symptoms and, um, it's interesting because Pre-existing to COVID, I, as I mentioned, I have lung problems. I've got asthma, and then I also have had um, chronic back pain uh, due to osteoarthritis and some other conditions. And I've always been a migraine sufferer for decades now. Um, and all three of those things have really been bothering me the last few days. Um, and what's a little bit concerning is especially the headaches don't, they're not responding to my usual medication. So, um, so it's like everything's worse. Like my back pain is like right now as I'm sitting, it's really bad right back in here in my, between my shoulder blades. It's pretty severe. It was waking me up the last two nights, which is a bit unusual for me. And then, um, and then I've been sort of 
having a rumbling sounding cough too. I'm not super tired. I mean, I, I'm kind of tired, but not like it's not severe. So that's good. I'm glad about that, but I have been sleeping a lot. Um, so in any case, what's a little bit concerning to me is, you know, I got online of course and scared myself by reading some things that said that, you know, you might have, I might have long COVID. Um, my sister had long COVID when she got it and my niece got long COVID as well. Um, and so I'm concerned because online, you know, it said some of these symptoms can last for weeks, if not months, and in some cases years. So it's kind of, um, throwing me for a loop because, um, you know, as you know, I want to get out on the road full time. And so I'm thinking if I'm not feeling well enough, even in my apartment, how can I possibly go around in an RV when I'm not feeling very well? So I'm kind of feeling like things are a bit on hold for the moment to see how this uh, plays out if my symptoms resolve um, or if I figure out some ways to deal with them. I'm thinking I want to go on a fast. <laughs> um but I don't know as if I can last for very long on a fast. Um, when I was younger, you know, I was able to do fasts and last, you know, several days. And I just feel like it gives your body a chance to clear out, you know, and deal with whatever's going on, you know. But I haven't done a fast in a long, long time. And so I just think it would be really challenging for me. But I might at least try to do a juice fast or figure out just maybe one meal a day and um, just give my body as much chance to heal as it can. But in any case, I'm not sure what what to do. Uh, a couple of things that are helping symptoms a little bit is a product, a supplement called Perilla Oil. And then another thing that seems to be helping is turmeric because there's a lot of inflammation going on and turmeric uh, really helps with inflammation so i'm finding that that helps and then i'm also of course reaching for the advil and the ibuprofen and the acetaminophen um i hate taking those but uh you know when i'm in this much pain i have to um in any case it's sort of thrown a wrench in in my plans to get out on the road because i need to make sure that i can do it you know i have enough chronic <laughs> health conditions I deal with and to have long COVID on top of it. And of course, I'm just guessing that I have long COVID. I don't know. Um, by my instincts and intuition tell me that it is either the lingering effects of the COVID or I'm moving into long COVID. Um, I always felt and suspected that I was a bit of a candidate for long COVID uh, because I've already, I already have some autoimmune type issues going on. And uh, so I always kind of worried about getting um, COVID because of that uh, concern that I probably was going to get long COVID. Um, it's just a intuition I had about it. Um, but yeah, even now it's like I have a staff meeting for my job in 45 minutes and I have to sit there for an hour on camera and I'm not even sure if I can manage that because sitting for long periods of time with this back pain is really hard. Um, so the thought of trying to drive, you know, for two and three hours at a time is kind of uh, a little bit daunting at this time to think about doing something like that. So, yeah, I actually wanted to go to Rubber Tramp Rendezvous for the first time in January, um, but now that's kind of up in the air as to how well I will feel. Um, and then I was thinking after I did that, I would go ahead and go on a test run, you know, for several weeks um, and just see how it goes. Because uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, over the last uh, seven years, seven, eight years, I've moved about every two years. 
Um, and I had a condo that I lived in that I owned that I lived in up until about 2017. I had lived in there for about 10 years. Sold my condo and then um, moved to Sacramento. Hated it in Sacramento. And then I moved to a little town called Woodland near Davis. And that was better, but I still missed being in the Bay Area. And so I applied for these affordable apartments for seniors uh, in Sonoma uh, County. And I managed to be one of the lucky ones to be able to, to move into these uh, really nice, they're, they're rather nice apartments. I'm not totally happy here, but, um, you know, it's pretty nice for what it is. And so I um, have lived here now for four years and um, it's been great. And it's hard to think about giving it up because once I do that, I cannot get back in. My niece just moved here from New Orleans and she said that when she would go out, when she goes out to look at apartments now in uh, Sonoma County, um, in Santa Rosa in particular, there's like 40 applicants for each apartment and the prices are extremely high. You pay $1,600 for basically a little sto you know, postage stamp of a place. Um, with maybe a hot plate <laughs> and it's just super competitive. So I realized that once I, if I give this apartment up, I'm not getting back in most likely. It would be really hard. Although I think senior apartments are a little easier to get into than the family apartments. Um, a lot more um, families trying to get into places. So seniors, I think, have a little bit of a better chance, but it's still difficult, particularly in the highly desirable areas. So I'm reluctant to give this place up, but um, at the same time, I can't afford to do RV life and travel in the RV and keep this apartment. Uh, it just would not be a good use of my money uh, at all. And so it kind of feels like it's one or the other. I can't do both. Um, so in any case, I don't want to give this apartment up until I'm really sure that I think I would like and can do physically and mentally the RV life. Lots of doubts keep, creep, keep creeping in into my mind as I think about trying to tackle this lifestyle. You know, the stress of trying to find places to sleep all the time and um, driving mountain roads and, uh, you know, dealing with uh, breakdowns on the road and all the th things, you know, that come with the road life. So it's a mental stress that I'm not sure I can handle. Um, and then just, you know, the, the fear of um, scary situations happening and things like that. So um, I just want to do, I think it would be wise for me to do again a, uh, I did a four week trip in my um, teardrop last spring and it was really valuable because I could really see what worked and what didn't work and I came away from that realizing oh no I couldn't do full time in a teardrop some people can I've seen them on YouTube do it but I can't um, and that prompted me to buy the RV but um, you know I found the a couple of things to be a little hard with the RV like leveling and stuff although I'm sure that'll get easier with time but Still, you know, you're bending down, you're having to kneel down for long periods of time. And that's all hard for me physically uh, due to some back issues that I have. Um, so I, anyways, I need to do like a test run again before giving up this apartment. Um, and so I was thinking, oh, okay, I'll go in January down to the RTR and then I will travel around, you know, Southern Arizona or something. Um and then maybe even find some caravans to travel with, you know, and check it out. So that's the thinking. But right now with the symptoms I'm having, um, it's kind of all up in the air. So um, we'll see. We'll see what what I can, what is in the cards for me. Um, I mean, it's ironic because I already had concerns about being able to do the lifestyle physically and now it's just like now I'm even dealing with more um, 
you know, the back pain is really hard to deal with. I'm going to try doing the hot cold therapy on my back today and see if that helps. Um, and then maybe go for a walk and see if that helps as well. I was the other day, like I said, having a headache that would not go away. And even with my medications and that was concerning, but, um, but the headaches are getting better. So I'm glad about that. So I'm just hoping that this back pain and this cough, you know, I'm a little concerned about this nasty cough that I get, especially at night. Um, so yeah, my sister had some really scary long COVID symptoms. Um, and she's still kind of coping with them, you know, all these years later, uh, kind of as wreaks havoc that can wreak havoc, I think, on your immune system, particularly if you were kind of dealing with that already, you know, had it pre-existing. So, um, so that's where things are at. Um, I worry about my RV. It's in a storage place and I'm always think about it and worried about it. And like, is it okay? And, um, I'm not quite what sure what to do because, uh, you know, it's been really hot here in the West and here we are, you know, October 9th, I guess it is. And it's been so hot. Usually in October, it's wonderful, you know, weather, because I will always remember that my birthday is May 4th and my mother's birthday was October 6th. And we would always love the beautiful weather that we would have on our birthdays. And so dealing with all this hot weather lately has really kind of concerned me as well about RV life and dealing with these extreme heat conditions. I've never seen such long periods of heat like we're having here uh, in Sonoma County. It's um, been a really hot summer and days and days and days of over 100 degree temperatures. That's just highly unusual. Never seen anything like it. So, you know. Um, I am a believer in climate change. The climate crisis is real, and I believe that that is what's happening. I definitely am tuned in enough to know, you know, to the weather patterns and being aware of how I can see that slowly but surely things are changing for the worse. And so it concerns me to get out on the road and be dealing with that, you know, dealing with extremes of this and that. And quick weather changes and stuff, you know, that's kind of scary, you know, so I'm worried about that as well. Um, you know, at least here in my apartment, you know, I've been able to sort of hunker down and, and, and turn on my AC and not worry about it crapping out on me or anything and, um, you know, deal with it. It's not been fun to be kind of cooped up in my apartment and, you know, it would be even more extreme in a small RV to be cooped up in there. I can't imagine how people that are living out of their cars are dealing with it, but uh, hopefully they're able to, you know, drive to cooler places. But, um, you know, it's a concern because I feel like um, the weather is changing and there's things, you know, more extreme temperature and um weather patterns happening and so um it's 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 a bit scary to me um so there's a lot of things to consider and so i'm just uh trying to weigh them all out and just wait for things to kind of become a little bit more clear to me as to what the best course of action is um but uh, I will keep you updated and uh, just let you know what's going on. But yeah, I, I, I go down to my RV occasionally. And what I was about to say is I was thinking about the fact that pretty soon, supposedly, rainy season should start. And I should probably put, my, um, put a cover on the rig because it's out in the elements there. Um, but I'll need somebody to help me. But then again, I don't know if I should because I do want to try and see if I can take it out on a camping trip, um, maybe sometime in October or November. So I don't want to go to all the trouble of putting it on and having to take it off again. So, um, anyways, I go down there occasionally if it's not too hot. Um, I have to go early morning, so I'm not, not boiling inside the RV. 
um, and do a little bit of decor stuff. Um, I did do this uh, a little uh, peel and stick tile thingy on my kitchen, and so I'll put the clip here of that uh, one little decor thing that I did that I, I really think it turned out well. Well, I hope everybody is doing well and staying safe and uh, sending my best wishes to you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. So I just installed my lace curtains in the kitchen and I'm very pleased with how they turned out. And uh, even though you can kind of see through it, I think it's okay. It's uh, it's fine. And then, as you can see, I also got my peel and sticks up, and I'm very pleased with how they turned out. I put them all the way up. I really love them. I like that they're not shiny, but rather the uh, a matte um, finish on these. And I think they're four by four squares. And super easy to put up couldn't believe it how easy it was i'm debating about whether or not i'll put some along the bottom there i might just leave it as is um so and then i have the other wall that i need to do yet um, i think i'm going to do this wall as well i certainly have enough plenty of these left over <clears throat> in case you're interested these are premium peel and stick tile st stickers by me, Alma. Um, it doesn't say the design, but it's the star design. And I got them off of Amazon. The other thing I um, did is I found. I was worried about like how am I gonna where am I gonna put all of my you know shampoos and shower gels and whatnot um, as I'm afraid if I tried to stick something on the wall it would just fall down with all the movement so I found this I found this um, on Amazon and it just hangs off of your uh, shower curtain rods and it has these pockets that you can it's like there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pockets. So it's plenty room for anything I need in there. So I was happy to find that. Um, <clears throat> I am having trouble with my toilet seat kind of coming loose after a few uses. And I was hoping that I could lift this and tighten it here, but it's a weird style here. There's no way, way to, to tighten this, so I'm not sure how I can do it. Uh, so I gotta figure something else with that. <clears throat> I also got a vintage um, throw blanket for my bed. But um, I'm actually debating um, if and when I go full time whether or not I wanna turn this into a king size bed back here. I might, because um, I have a wonderful queen size topper that I could put on it that's super comfortable. Um, so I haven't decided on that yet, but I was happy to find this sweet little vintage throw.